Hello. How are you today? Yeah, I'm pretty fine. I don't, I don't know. I can kind of think maybe I catch a little bit of flu, so I'm don't not feeling hundred percent, but yeah. it's okay. That's too bad. Yeah. I guess it's Corona. It's lurking around, lurking around mm-hmm. the corner. So I, <laughs> I guess I have to test myself to yeah tomorrow or something. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing of these times, see. Eh? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, trying to run a band these days is, uh, yeah. you know, touring and all that stuff. It's it's a mess. It, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's just crazy. So we are now just today actually discussing, you know, the U.S. tour, how to, you know, approach that with the work visas and everything. And, you know, everything is like, yeah, going slow. And, of course, we have been bleeding a lot of money so there is not much left to do you know mm-hmm. fun things and you know it's yeah so it's it's uh it's complicated i guess <laughs> all right i was just gonna say so you you had a re-release of your debut album you've had attempts at touring um and new material on the horizon i heard you talking about how there will be new material obviously you don't know exactly when um mm-hmm. so how is the band holding up how do you feel you guys well, you know, we have been out, uh, as we say in Norway, we have been out winter night before, so to speak. I mean, we have been through uh, ups and downs and, you know, all these things. Uh, so, you know, it, it, we have a long back, back catalog we can kind of lean on in a sense. You know, we really released this debut album. We did a really nice version of it. And, you know, it, you know, because of the situation, we got actually, or I got the time to do a proper work. Um, and that was kind of my premise to doing this re-release to, to actually do something worth the money for, for you know for the people, not just buying a reprint or something, but actually buying something with value. So I, I really wanted this to be a proper, well done uh, re-release, and and you know got the chance to do that at least. Uh, so uh, so um, it's going fine. Of course, we we're gonna survive, and we're gonna gonna. You know, we kind of see the light in the end of the tunnel now, of course, and and we are starting. We kind of feel that you know the the the, the age or agents and bookers and all that starting to you know things is starting kind of to live a little bit again, but uh, you know there is still a lot of uncertainties. We don't really know. We we just had to cancel. Our, we're supposed to do a festival in Zurich in in Switzerland, like eighth yeah. of January or something like that. But you know, whatever we did, we did it was just not possible you know in in terms of you know the situation in norway and, and you know the the uh, the corona was kind of skyrocketing and all that stuff so we just had to okay it's it's not going to work mm-hmm. so so it's it's still complicated but you know it's it's uh, i have a feeling it's it's getting a little bit back to normal now so hopefully we will you know be able to get back on on <laughs> on our horses so to speak yeah. and, and ride on in a sense yeah i hope so i hope so for sure. Um, so the debut album was done in Norwegian. How did you decide to do the rest of the albums in English? Is that a hard thing to do? In all honesty, I mean, to me, that was, um, you know, we, I, I guess not just we Norwegians, but at least in Norway, uh, you know, we, we start to learn English in a very early age in schools. Uh, we, we, you know, in, in, in Germany, they have, uh, you know, everything is kind of, um, um, they have done the sound, you know, a re- resample the sound, so to speak, and talking in studio <laughs> terminology. Um, but we, you know, we American films, I mean, we are kind of very used to, to English. So actually, I came to a point when, uh, and, you know, when I did the first album, that was kind of the idea. I wanted to, to make this Norwegian, to make it kind of authentic in that sense. But, but I came to a point where I, I didn't feel that the Norwegian language, as, as I knew it, was in a sense, big enough um, to scope my lyrical ideas, in a sense. I didn't feel that I was able to express, I, even though that was my native lang- language, so to speak. I even used my own dialect writing those lyrics. Mm. I didn't feel that I had all the words I needed, it, in a sense. So, in all honesty, that was, uh, to me, um, 
a kind of realization that I, in order to, to be able to reach out there with my lyrics, with my music, I just had to, to use the, the English language. And of course, I, I before this band, I also did some death metal. We, we sung in English and stuff like that. So it, in, in a sense, it felt musically, artistically, it felt more natural. I might sound a little bit weird, but, but actually it did. Because, you know, Norwegian is not, in my mind, and this is just my opinion, but Norwegian is... It's kind of very poetic language in in a sense, but it's you know we are just four million people in Norway. We we kind of a very small country. You know the vocabulary is not that big in in a sense. So to me, it felt a little bit too small. The language was just too small <laughs> in a sense, and and that was real reason for it. Actually, I wanted to to be able to to broaden the horizon, lyrically speaking, and. Uh, uh, um, reach farther out so to speak hmm. so was there a discussion about the direction and changes of the albums over the years or did music just get created how it got created There's lots of changes you know of course we as everybody else we kind of when we gather up either for a studio touring or just hanging around drinking but we talk music we talk about the future the past and everything in between in a sense but I've always had this idea about the band that I wanted to, to let things flow. Um, it kind of derives from a basic idea I had with the band back in the day. I mean, that's why we have the name we have. I didn't, I mean, even back then, I was kind of 18, 19 years old, and I had a crystal, crystal clear vision about uh, kind of establishing, making a band in which has no association whatsoever in a sense i wanted to have a name that didn't you know you couldn't um, stamp it to a certain style of genre of music or a association towards movie song you know whatever i, I just wanted to kind of make my own musical bubble in a sense and 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 so so for me this this mentality of independence was such an important virtue back then and and still is actually so so we are you know I always try to avoid um too much of 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 um yeah basically associations uh, try to make our own musical universe and and don't um yeah again i forgot your question to be honest <laughs> your main question yeah so then, yeah it was just about like was there discussion or did the changes just sort of happen it sounds like it was like it just kind of happened right <laughs> Yeah, and that was basically what I was trying to 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 make my point here. That I've always tried to to make um, you know my music a bubble, and I want this to be independent in a sense. I want it kind of just to happen by instinct or by whatever you know, just to kind of as as a flowing stream in a sense that it shouldn't be too much too much planning. It shouldn't be too much of. Of I don't know because for me that's the the, the mode where I feel most creative in a sense. Um, when I I write write songs here in my studio, for example, or you know I don't sit down planning too much. I just sit down with my guitar and start from there. I don't you know now I'm sitting down for two hours writing a new song or I have to have two songs finished by next month or you know I I, I try to avoid these these obstacles because. To me, music should be a little bit independent from all this, watching the clock, keeping the schedules. Uh, to me, that is creativity in a sense, being able to move a, move around as you want, when you want, do what you want, um, whenever you want kind of thing. And that is a mentality. Obviously, we can't only do that, but but I try to keep on, cling on to that idea a little bit in the band, musically and creatively speaking, at least, to, 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 to just... Um, make things happen when it happened in a sense yeah so can we expect the same solid lineup of musicians for your next album oh yeah definitely i would hope so if you know i don't know you know <laughs> nobody knows what happens tomorrow basically but yeah we have very good chemistry and 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 we've already you know um far into the i wouldn't say production though but at least writing of the next album we have a bunch of material and, and stuff like that so i'm kind of actually this week i'm yeah, I'm kind of starting on my second phase of kind of producing my songs a little bit more and, and starting to send around to the guys and stuff like that. So it's it's kind of, um, yeah, we are probably going to start 
some production in not too distant future, I hope. So, and the same guys and the same, you know, we basically have the idea about, what can I say? Doing it pretty much the same way as we did with the True North album, uh, which was a really a cool experience for us. We, we actually spent quite some money or budget money on, on just being together as a band. I mean, me staying in Oslo because I live in Bergen, the rest of the guys live in Oslo. So, so uh, we, we locked ourselves in this studio, for example, when we did the vocals, just locked our in some food, some beer and all that, of course. And then we just stayed there for like three, three, four days or something like that, doing all the vocals uh, together as a unit. Nothing disturbed us. You know, this studio is some countryside and stuff. So it's, you know, there's nothing flashy going on or parties going on, yeah. you know, the uh, door next, the uh, next door, let's say. So, so, uh, so, um, yeah, we try to do the same thing now and just have a good time and make a great album. Great. Mm. Awesome. Um, so what are you most proud of musically and, uh, and in life? <laughs> Yeah, in life, I would say, you know, I can I have to say my kids, of course, I have to I have a son and a daughter. And, you know, that is, is, is you know, my big, my, my heart, basically, you know, that is where, you know, my, my heart lies, so to speak. But musically speaking, of course, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to single out in a sense, because, you know, it has been a so such a integrated part of my life I, you know i started underground tra tape trading i started my first band in 89 or something like that 90 i've been doing this my whole life in a sense you know i it's a kind of natural part of my life it's yeah, I'm, I'm, but i i mean if there is one thing it's more a con concept maybe or more a story i'm proud of i think it's it's you know I'm 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 been I've been doing this since the very beginning. And and you know, I remember the early days when I just had my acoustic guitar in the and the and the and, and yeah, I was still living at home with my parents and stuff. I was like 18, 17, 18 years old and started doing some riffs and I was like listening to this acoustic guitar because I grew up on the countryside and I always been very fascinated by, 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 by nature and of course obviously you know the, the concept we have and the lyrics we have but I remember um, one thing that struck me back then I kind of sparked the, the idea was that you know when I kind of was was playing my acoustic guitar I got from my parents for Christmas or something like that I kind of got the same wooden feeling as when I was kind of <laughs> cutting branches in the woods, let's say, or building a hut or whatever in, in, in the woods or whatever we did back then. And, and that kind of just, you know, this, this wooden hmm, organic feeling of, of timber in a sense. Uh, and, 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 you know, that was the basic core idea. This and together, of course, with this idea about making a music of my own musical bubble. And from there, things have kind of become what it is now. Uh, this whole storyline of this small, tiny idea by a kid on a countryside in Norway uh, went from there and, you know, yeah, 25, 26 years later, it's like, it's it's my job. It's my, <laughs> it's a huge impact on a lot of people. It's, you know, uh, have a lot of people working for us and stuff like that. You know, that is crazy. and And that is, uh, something I'm very proud of, of course, because because you know it's it's to me has I've never had this idea about being a rock star or famous or money or whatever. I'm I'm I've always you know this this um this this sensation of creating something from from zero in a sense, I'm building something. I also love I, this studio. I built everything myself, and that's kind of the way I'm probably mentally. <laughs> made but i love to make things from ground up in a sense whatever it is if it's a house yeah that's cool let's build a house if it's music you know build things is something i just love since i was a kid so 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 the fact that we have you know has yeah i'm sitting here doing this interview now i've sold a lot of records and 11 albums we have been touring all over the place u.s uh Europe many many times and festivals and all that it's it's pretty crazy and I'm, of course I'm proud of that what what you know this tiny little 
seed of ID back in the day has actually become. That is, that's a kind of an adventure. It's, it's, um, and it's very humb- humbling in a sense also, because, you know, I'm also a, a music lover. So when I pe- talk with people, fans, journalists, um, I can kind of, kind of relate to this importance of music. I mean, to me, music is has the same value. It's just that it's different artists. I, you know, my mothership in, in music is Pink Floyd. But, but of course, I like a lot of other bands. But Pink Floyd has always been a band that gives me a feeling that nothing else gives me. It gives me uh, some energy that nothing else gives me. It has a very special place in my, my life, mm-hmm. musically speaking. And, and when I'm talking with fans, for example, and they have a little bit of the same notion about my music, it's 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 powerful stuff. Yeah. Um, and of course, I'm proud, I'm humbled, I'm everything in between, I guess. It's it's really cool. So yeah. um, I haven't traveled much, and I think I have this romantic idea of what Norway is like. I, apparently, mm-hmm. my, my dad has Norwegian in him. And um, so can you describe, you were describing the area you live as a countryside, but what kinds of animals are common in your area and stuff? I live in the country where I am, I'm in Canada, but what kind of, just for interest, what kind of animals do you see often in your area? Um, it's, it's, unfortunately, it's not that much, but, uh, but I have a good friend coming by the studio sometimes, I actually have some pictures on, on my Instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deer. Um, yeah. Was by quite a big one. It started to come by when it was a small one, just walking down there. Like, my, and my cats was pretty crazy about it, trying to you know run it down or something. But that was not, that's a little bit too ambitious, I guess, from a cat side. Uh, but now it's a big one, and it's pretty big. And sometimes when I kind of work from my studio to my house, here is like small trail on, on here. And, and, and I can hear it up in, in the woods. So that's that's one. Um, we have some foxes going back and forth sometimes, checking out things and, and start running over the streets and stuff. Uh, of course, mice and rats sometimes. But, but And of course, a lot of birds. We have a lot of birds here. But uh, apart from that, it's not much really. And, and, and yeah, that's kind of sad. Um, so it's... it's, it's, it's it's wildlife, definitely. I mean, walking in the woods here is like walking in the jungle, especially in the summertime or springtime. But but uh, there is not a lot of big animals, so to speak. We don't have, you know, the, the big moose is, is not really living here in this area. You have to go from more north or yeah. northeast, at least, to find those, for example. Um, so, so it's um, deer. Definitely some. Um, one morning I was waking up and there was a horse though, but that's a horse was kind of <laughs> had escaped from a, okay. a farm um, yeah. next by. So that's a kind of a yeah different thing though. But uh, yeah, I'm a country girl, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. cool. Um, so in regard to your first experiences writing lyrics, um, how did the lyric writing come to life in you? Did did you go straight to lyric writing, or did you do stories and poetry or something else first, or no, uh, you know, I, 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 to be honest, I've always been first and foremost a musician, and, and lyrics has been not secondary. I, ca- I can't say that because it's not. But, but, I've, you know, music. I've always been my the spearhead of 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 what I'm doing in a sense. So that kind of leads the way in a sense. Um, so I try to kind of what can I say uh, drape the whole music with the lyrics I find fitting and, and stuff like that. So it's a kind of symbiosis in a sense. But always music first. But but uh, you know I have uh, have also you know <laughs> philosophical ideas about my music and and one of those is that you know real genuinely good music whatever that is though. But in my mind. Is is music should be kind of close to 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 life in a sense, in honest, close to life. I mean, music is a very human artifact in a sense. I mean, birds doesn't, as far as we know, listen to music. Cats doesn't bother much about my music, so to speak. Yeah. But it's kind of very human artifact. So, to me, from the very early beginning, it has been a very kind of important thing to to portray both musically and also lyrically life. And, and my life, because I'm the you know the composer, at least on the songs I've done, um, and and whatever is written for those songs should be through my uh, writing, so to speak. So, so I, um, 
And that being said, I'm a country boy. Um, I growing, I didn't walk, I didn't go to any kindergarten or anything like that. I had to go to school. I was forced to go to school actually, but but I spent all my my childhood in the woods um, and stuff like that. So so for me, the most natural thing in the world is to you know to to when doing lyrics poetry. Um, to, to use nature as kind of a, a, the scene for everything, to use the nature as the, the framework for my lyrics. Um, mm. It doesn't always, you know, my lyrics doesn't always deal act- actually about nature in a sense. It deals about, you know, everything from internal struggles to maybe a touch of, you know, s- s- yeah, s- environmental things and stuff like that, you know, but more kind of descriptive in a sense. I've, I've always used to portray nature, love to portray nature. I mean, if I was a painter, I would probably paint woods and nature and mountains. You know, I'm not the guy who is sitting in, in a town, a bohemian dude that's sitting with a cafe latte or something like that, drawing an art, artsy, whatever, of a guy sitting on a bench in the you know park or something like that. I'm, I would probably portray... <laughs> you know, mountains, woods and stuff like that. So, you know, that's my lyrical scope in a sense. Um, But of course, that being said, there is a lot of different um, feels and ideas behind the lyrics. Uh, Let's say True North, for example, has different themes and and, and based on different ideas. But of course, they have some of the same approach in a sense, though. But, But that's the way I'm being honest. That's the way I'm the best of my abilities when it comes to being a musician and a lyricist, so to speak. That's the best of me. So so why not? Yeah. So a song such as Wildfather's Heart was an emotional outpouring um, tied yeah. to hard loss for you. Was there a song in True North or maybe that you're working on now that was hard to get the flow going, but you're liking what's coming? Um, y- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there is. There is always a f- one or two songs on each album that I kind of struggles a little bit with. Uh, let's say, let's say on let's scroll back to with the tries. I remember the song, the title song of that album, with the tries. The song that was a hard nut to crack. Uh, and actually, just before I mean, in until just before we were supposed to, you know, finish the album, I was I was kind of planning to just scrap that song. I was like, yeah, no, no, you know, it's it's boring. It has nothing, you know, whatever. But then we kind of I got the vocals from Chris and all that stuff. It's like, oh shit, this is going to be become something. So that's kind of the irony in it. Sometimes the songs I'm kind of struggling a little bit with and kind of feel that ah. Did this, I'm not sure if this is the right thing, or I, you know, maybe I should just leave it or whatever. That song usually turns out to be something. I don't know if that's because you know it, it kind of forces you into a mode where you have to crack some nuts to, yeah. to make it work in a sense, to, to, to spend some extra effort or something like that. But maybe. Um also on the True North, yeah. Um, one of the songs I really love on that album, personally speaking, is the is the song title. Um, of course, Wild Father's, Heart, Wild Father's Heart also is a very important song to me due to my, you know, my father and all that stuff. But, but also Tidal was a very kind of important song to me. Um, uh, and I remember I struggled a lot with that song to find the right, I don't know, find the right pace, uh, structure, uh, feel, flow in it in a sense. But uh, but now I think that's one of my favorite songs. I, I just love the what can I say adventurous, journey like feeling of that song in a sense. Uh, and that was actually what I wanted with that song. But but the, you know it was kind of a little bit difficult to climb that mountain. But but made it in the end. <laughs> so have you always had a social aspect to doing music, like being with other people and doing it? No, not really. Uh, to be honest, uh, I've always been kind of a loner. Um, in my ed- ideal world, I would just make music and that's it. You know, I, I could easily survive with that. I mean, for uh, for me, it's when all come to all, it's all about music to me. I didn't, I don't, don't necessarily need to release it. I don't necessarily need to have a career on it. I, you know, you know. First and foremost, for me, it's it's the satisfaction of making something, making music. There's nothing in this world that gives me such a buzz and good feeling as as you know, 
kind of realizing that okay i made something here that's this is a cool riff this is a cool arrangement or something like that. i can live on that for two weeks in a row i mean i don't need to eat sleep or anything i can just wow that was cool it kind of very energizing and that is i guess probably a little bit like a drug addict i guess i i, I kind of you know it i need that <laughs> hit so to speak i need that you know shot or whatever you should call it so 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 um, that is where it starts for me uh, everything else is kind of secondary i don't need to hang around on pubs or being a whatever person but you know in in um and i've always been a little bit of a loner i guess i you know not not that weirdo kind of thing but i've never been too into that social thing to be honest i i grew up in bergen around bergen and i hang around with the you know the black metal scene back in the old days but i kind of at some point i just ah it got a little bit too choking in a sense i just needed to you know distance myself a little bit and i did so you know haven't been really into the local seed since late 90s to be honest um I so can, um, i can sense that passion in your music so that's that's great <laughs> yeah, I mean, loneliness is underappreciated, I would say. I mean, I find so much, I mean, I don't know, maybe that's the way I'm just made or whatever, but, but uh, you know, I don't, um, you know, some of the, if I have to stay in a city for too long, I kind of get depressive by it. I mean, it's too great, it's too much noise, it's too yeah. much blinking lights. I don't know, it gets impersonal. Um yeah, I want to get away. I need space. I need uh, openness. I, you know, where I live now, I have in the mountains on this side. I can have my own trail up on the highest mountains here, uh, behind, uh, in my, in the Bergen area. Yeah. And on this side, I have the fjord. I have kind of everything I need. Me too. So. I'm surrounded by by some nice areas too. Um, Great. So myself, I often go to music for different moods. For example, when I'm excited or upset, can you give me a name of a song that you might go to for a very specific mood? Yeah. Um, oh man, there's, there's lots. I mean, <laughs> I'm an aging man, so I've been through a lot of yeah. music through years. Um, but lately, I mean, the last, couple of years i mean one song um i don't know it just clicked with me so much and it's it's uh, uh i don't remember exactly but it, it's it's the first song on this uh, ulver album um shadow of the sun with ulver yeah. i don't remember just now the title of the song but that is a song that just i don't know I mean, it's empowering in one sense, but it's also extremely sad. But but it gives me something. I mean, I don't know. It 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 cuddles me when I need that, but it also makes me stronger when I need that. If you get my point, it just gives me energy, mm -hmm. and I think that is to me sometimes. And again, maybe I'm a weirdo, but sad music can also to me be very energizing in a sense yeah, um sure. it kind of fighting fire with fire in i don't know uh, i don't i don't necessarily need happy music to become a happy person so to speak yeah. it, it doesn't really work like that uh, to me it's more like music is food for a soul in a sense that uh, sometimes um yeah um that's a song that that have actually helped me through a lot of you know ups and downs so to speak very kind of i love that song well, thank you very much for meeting with me and I, I wish you guys the best. I hope that uh, this tour pans out for you and uh, yeah, um, you guys are amazing. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great to hear. Yeah, let's hope. I mean, we're doing everything in our power to make this tour happen. It will happen, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But uh, we still have some obstacles to get over and stuff like that. But but um, I mean, you know, again, we didn't Corona situation, you know, we don't know what happened tomorrow really but but uh, it it feels safe now i i it, at least i'm feeling that we are over the uh, yeah that sound so to speak I, i'm feeling it will happen so let's hope so awesome have a great rest of your day take care same to you take care bye bye bye